What's up, everybody? It's your favorite. It's been a long, a long time coming, but I know something's gonna come. Favorite nerd, and today we are looking at Fans Toys Rouge, which half the fandom, including myself, often calls Rogue. That's because letters are tricky. We have a fair amount to talk about regarding this figure today. A lot of people have been curious as to my thoughts on it. I do have some changes coming to my channel as well that we're gonna be talking about towards the end, so let's get started. She comes with two guns, one pistol, it's got some gunmetal gray paint on it and some yellow paint on it. So it's a two-tone paint app on a single pistol. You're not gonna hear a complaint out of me about that. Same thing goes for this rifle. We got a pink app and then a, a gunmetal gray app. The pink, the light pink ends up looking a little plain. The stock is removable. And then actually, like, I know this is not right. It doesn't fit on there right, but I, I do kind of like the angle of that a bit better. Just something to think about. It's up to you. Your choice. She doesn't really hold them that well in her non-clip hands, but she holds them just fine in her clip hands. However, it doesn't really look natural. It doesn't look like she's really holding them. You know what I mean? It's just like they, they, just, they just look pegged into the hand. But they do work, which begs the question... If they were going to have one set of hands meant to hold the weapon and the other one not, why would they give both hands this kind of goofy expression? Do you know what I mean? Why does this hand look like it should be holding a gun when this hand is clearly the only hand that can hold the gun? We could have had relaxed hands, fist hands, anything else but this sort of strange... You know, I mean, it looks right for holding a gun, but if you're not holding a gun, it's just a very strange, maybe relaxed pose, but very strange to me. So I suppose that that covers that she comes with the extra set of hands that are strange, odd, shaped, relaxed, posed, which is fine, I guess. Just wouldn't have been my, my first choice. And then the swap out feature is dumb as well. It's a mushroom peg. They should have just made this a separate piece that pegged in where the hinge is. I don't, I don't understand it. She comes with a more conservative chest plate. If this is something that bothers you or gets you all worked up, here's a, an optional chest plate that, that won't bother you. If it bothers you, uh, that's fine. Just don't waste my time with it, please. There's a bigger issue going on in the world. She comes with a number of face swap options. The red visor look, so she can try to find Hot Rod and make sure he gets back to the city. A slight smile, a very strange facial expression. I think the thing that we should think about there is they probably have enough research to indicate that their target audience would be interested in such a thing. I think it might say more about us than it does about them in this particular circumstance. And then a big eye version, you know, like the animation did change from time to time in terms of how you saw her. And then like a yelling or a screaming face. So plenty of face options. Before we get into the figure, I wanted to show a size comparison. This is actually my second complete shelf for Transformers in all these years. Got only two shelves complete, but there it is. That is a rewarding feeling, I will admit. It's nice to see them all together. It looks good. They look good. Obviously, I have some of them in more action poses, but you can see she fits in with the cast just fine. She's back heavy. We'll start there. I don't know if it's that she's actually back heavy or that the small feet are not helping her stand. But there is some issue there. You can get her to stand. It's not impossible, but it doesn't make posing uh, very easy. Proportion-wise, I think she's right on the money. And I think that she cleans up exceptionally well. There's QC33. That's my guy. He's always doing the ones I get. We'll talk about the pros and cons to his work ethic as well. Here's the thing. There's a gap in the chest. You can see through it. That wouldn't bother me, except for one thing that we'll get to in a second. As a result, I'm not crazy about it. I think it is, um, I think it has an unprofessional vibe to it. You can see you're right through it. The back pieces here there are horror stories out there of people's becoming loose. I can see how that is very possible. It's die cast uh, armatures here, I think. And then it's painted as well. I can see that becoming an issue. People say that after a while you can do like Karate Kid 2 and thump, 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 you know? So I don't know what's going on with that. They are also unsightly, but who cares? 
because that's part of the character design. I think we should ac accept it. They do, however, get out and out of the way, but mine are holding just fine, which is what's going to bring us to our transformation conversation that we've yet to have. All right, let's talk about the figure. So the head is on a ball peg. The ball peg comes from the neck into the head. As a result, you get good articulation down, up, side, side, and all sorts of attitude and such. Doesn't bother me. Works just fine. We have white paint, and we have the go uh, the blue metallic on the eyes and red paint on the lips. And then this pink plastic is just straight plastic. No issues. Moving down, we have this neck piece. Now, because of transformation, you can get a hinge down on it, but it's not intentional. So you don't really get anything there, which is fine. Shoulders are on ball pegs. As a result, you can get them up to about there. The clearance, engineering-wise, doesn't allow you to get all the way out. It should. I, I think it was their intention for it, too. But it gets to about there, and that's 90 degrees, but it won't hold it. Not the best. There's a bicep swivel. It's a bit tight. There's a double jointed elbow. This pin here is a bit tight. You can get it, and it's a great range, but it is toleranced poorly. And it doesn't give you the warm and fuzzies when you're going to move it. We do have pink arm accent paint throughout, and then we have the red paint there at the back, which is nice. We have an additional, um, let's see, we have a wrist swivel. It's far up, and this is where you pop the arm out in order to swap arms. I don't recommend it. It looks very sketchy to me. We have a wrist hinge in and out. And then we have a finger hinge on the base pen knuckle in and out. And I've already talked about my issues with the hands. Same for this side. Torso, chest, abdomen, pelvis. Gray paint. Actually, that might be the plastic. White paint, I'm guessing. Pink and red paint. All of that looks clean. This is pink plastic. It's tabbed in. All of the paint on the chest looks great. There are stories of this paint chipping off during the transformation process. We'll talk about that in a bit. No way swivel. To me, I can't forgive that. Not on a $100 figure. I can't forgive that. That's a real bummer. It really takes the life out of this figure. It's like you have to have her in some kind of relaxed kind of stoic pose now which is just unfortunate this which she does have some sort of hinge does not count it's nice to have but it's only nice to have if you can actually turn her waist which you can there's like there's something is moving but it's not enough it's, it's not worth mentioning hips universals they get you up to there so no problem back to there so no problem out to there no problem. A little tight. Thigh swivel. There's a ton of breakup line work. It does take a little something out of the figure. Um, Display-wise, it does lessen it, but cost of doing business, right? Knee. Single hinge. Beautifully done. People have complained about the knee look. I think it's, I think it's really well executed. Because of the tire design and all that, you get to keep the look and aesthetic of the figure while you're manipulating the knee and the range is insane so i think it's good to go gunmetal paint there pink paint there i think there's white paint on some of this on these legs as well to be honest yes 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 i do and then we have gunmetal paint down here on the ankle pieces the ankles themselves ankle tilt down mm. watch watch the seam in this calf as i go to do you see it? Do you see it putting pressure on this? It's not tolerance well. But you do get an ankle tilt down and a fairly decent one up. And this ankle cover will cover down on the joint. So that's nice. Toe tilt up. And old school, proper, really proper ankle rocker. So that works extremely well. And we'd assume it's the same for the other side, correct? Well, let's look at the back. That's how she cleans up. It's not terrible, given the design of the character. Oh, articulation, same for the other side. Forward, right? No problem. Back. Except mine won't go out to the side. Like, 
this is the sort of stuff that drives me insane. It's, it's the lack of professionalism. It's the lack of, I, I never have this sort of an issue with other import companies that aren't third party transformers. I can't get my leg out to the side. No. And I'm afraid to bust it. You know, I spent money on this thing. Like, it's a real bummer. What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to review this when I can't even get the joints to move? Why should I transform this when I can already tell it will not be the same after I transform it. So I'm stuck in a conundrum. If I don't transform it, I can't really have a valid opinion of it all. If I do transform it, I know for a fact certain things aren't gonna be the same. And I work hard for my money, so I'm not transforming. It's not worth it. Now I got this from 215 Toys. I know without a shadow of a doubt, if I were to hit them up and say, I can't, they would exchange it, they would swap it out, they would order a new one, but all of that's putting a strain on their pockets. And I'm not the type of customer that whines a whole lot, so I would never put them out. Not for something that's ultimately not their fault and it's going to cost them time and money. This is an issue from this manufacturer. This is an issue from this design. I just spent $100 on a figure with no waste wheel. I'm finding that less and less agreeable. I'm finding that less and less acceptable. This leads to a conversation that we're gonna have on Saturday about non-transforming figures and how some people don't think they qualify as transformers. Well, let me tell you something. A figure without a waist swivel doesn't classify as a figure to me. I can't recommend this. However, I can't really give it a fair review either because I can't get through the transformation of it. But the reason why I can't get through the transformation is because I can tell that my investment will not return the same. So therefore, I can't recommend it. Can't get my opinion on the alt mode, can't get my opinion on the engineering, outside of the robot engineering, which I can tell you will be flawed if I manipulate this thing much more. My personal advice is tricky. Here's the thing. If you like to manipulate your figures, this is definitely not the one for you. It doesn't have the action figure element. What I would recommend is waiting for MMC's Ocular Max RC. Here's the problem with that. The MMC Ocular Max line hasn't had a home run outside of the tapes in a very long time. So it's quite the gamble. I strongly recommend them to give this one everything they got because this is their chance to have a really strong release over top of a very reputable company. The problem with that is this. Fans Toy Stuff has a reputation and a history of selling out and then becoming very expensive on the secondary market while you wait for a re-release. So I can recommend it. But if you're concerned about not having the character on your shelf, I would say buy it, keep it pristine, put it on the shelf, don't mess with it much. If the RC comes out from MMC and that one's better, flip this one, get that one, and move on with your day. This is not up to the caliber of Fans Toys. It's not. This isn't Fans Toys. This is Fans Toys. It's very disappointing. Easily the most disappointed I've ever been with one of their releases. It does have some things going for it, stuff that we do expect from Fans Toys. Sculpt, there. Articulation, not so much. Paint, there. Presence, it's there. On your shelf, it'll be fine. Can I recommend it? No. Why? Because it doesn't do what it should do, and it doesn't do what it's supposed to do. I was contemplating not reviewing it at all because honestly, I don't even feel like it's worth my time. But I kept hearing from a lot of people that they wanted to know my opinion on it, and I kept hearing from a lot of people that they were having similar issues that what I was having. Like this, and this, and that, and this. Granted, we talk about paint chipping being an issue when you have a lot of paint on a figure that has to transform. So some of that, we have to eat. We've seen it on almost every figure that's really, really well painted. We see some paint chipping when it comes to transformation. Some of the pieces in here are very thin, and there's an awful lot of moving and manipulating of pieces in order to make this transformation work. And it's probably operator error, but the figure should still stand up against moving pieces that are anti-intuitive to allow for that state of forgiveness for making mistakes for a design that's a nightmare. Looking through the instructions of this, there are elements that make Bad Cube look like a kid's cardboard puzzle. I'm not going to say it's worse than G Creations Prime, but I'm not going to say it's better either, because I'm not going to do it, because I'm not going to throw my money away any more than I already have. Still has a lot of the Fans Toys strengths, has more flaws than we've seen on any other Fans Toys release. That's my state on it. I don't recommend it unless you're worried you won't have the opportunity later on down the line and you want to get it for a little insurance, in which case that's a hustle. 
Bummer. Real quick while I got you, I'm gonna be making some changes to my channel soon. I'm thinking about doing a video. You'll be noticing some of them. I just need a change. I wanna do something different, I wanna do something new. I'll still be doing reviews, not as many, but I got plenty more Transformer reviews coming and I gotta fall back out of that comment section. But if you ask me a question, I will do my best to answer it. More on all that later. Thanks for listening, thanks for watching. Until next time, take care.